let's jump into chapter 11 with a lecture. Now most of this chapter is demo based. We're going to be talking about the different tools we use. We're going to be walking through actual scenarios here. But I thought it would be good to start off with kind of two things. One, an overview of all of the built-in tools that we're going to be working with, kind of the, the tools of the trade. Uh, and then two, to talk about what we are monitoring, what the goals of monitoring are, just maybe have some guidelines and a little space to talk. And, and I like the, the more presenter, presentation style when I need some space to talk about something. I find, <laughs> this is, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, <laughs> but I find it, it keeps me on track more if I have uh, a, a set of presentation slides that I have to flip through and I have to get through in a 10 or 15 minute period versus just having a blank sheet of paper and I can talk about whatever. Uh, okay, anyway, sorry. Um, we're going to talk, uh, like I said, in this chapter about a lot of different tools here. And I'm choosing to really only focus on the built-in tools that ship with SQL Server. Now, this is going to disappoint some people. I know it's going to disappoint a lot of vendors that I'm not plugging their products. <laughs> um, uh, however, let me just lead with this, and I said this, I've said this in other courses as well. If you have questions about specific third-party products or you would like me to uh, tell you which third-party product I might think is good or whatnot, feel free to email me. Just go to the Learn It First uh, website and I'll be happy to uh, you know, answer some questions. I don't know them all. There's new tools that come out every day. As SQL Server 2005, 2008, R2 uh, get more and more popular, Microsoft has made the internals easier to access. And because of this, you're just seeing, or I've seen this explosion of management and performance tools. So I don't know them all. So you, you can ask, but I can't promise you that I'm going to know all of them. So to try to make this as even as I could, I chose to go with the built-ins. Okay? In other words, everybody who has a copy of SQL Server Standard Edition is going to have the tools that I have here. Everybody who has a copy of Enterprise Edition or Developer Edition will have access to the tools that I have here. Sorry, those of you on Express, you're not going to have all of these tools here. Okay, That's why they make you pay. Okay? Um, but I, I wanted to kind of uh, make it appealing to everybody, so I'm not covering all the, the various ones here. So we're going to talk about the built-in tools. Now before we get into that, Let's talk about what we can monitor, the types of things that we're looking for, uh, and get a few terms down so that I can use these later on in this presentation and really in the rest of this chapter. So let's talk about real-time stats. I can actually monitor what's going on right now. I'm basically taking a snapshot. I can see how many transactions a second are running through. I can actually see the transactions right now that are going on. That's just your real-time monitoring, right? I think we're all probably familiar with that. Let's just use that term, real-time monitoring. Okay, it, it's not necessarily trend analysis. We're not, um, you know, looking at what it was yesterday or what it's been over the last two hours. I'm looking at the incoming statements right this absolute second. Now then, the opposite of that would really be trend analysis. We want to see over the past week, what were the peak times? What were the peak transactions? Right? We're looking for trends in our data over a period of time. Maybe since the last time the service started. Uh, maybe since yesterday at 2 o'clock. Right? And it's often common that you will do both of these together. You've been tracking a lot of your monitoring over time and you want to compare, you know today at 2.15 things started slowing down, what happened today relative to what happened yesterday at 2.15 or last Thursday at 2.15. Okay. So let's just keep those two terms in mind, real-time monitoring trend analysis. No, no biggie. Right? Now I think it's really important to know why you're monitoring. <laughs> I know this seems kind of pedantic and it seems a little bit silly but when we start talking about doing trend analysis and capturing all of these uh, real-time queries, 
we're talking a lot about a lot of data. We're talking about adding overhead to the system. We're talking about adding overhead potentially to your work schedule of having to write jobs, write scripts, write queries, write reports. So if you don't know why you're going to do this, I'm not really sure that adding it in there is the best place or is the best thing for you to do. Okay. So I just would suggest that you spend a while, maybe you and your team, talking about why you're monitoring and what is it you're going to do with that. You're going to write reports against it. Uh, you're going to have it auto-generate an email with metrics every morning to be sent to the DBA. Uh, what are you going to do? I, I will say in my experience, if I set up a monitoring system that constantly notifies me when nothing is wrong, I tend to not pay as much attention to that. And what I mean by that, let's say that we we set up a monitoring system and I ask it to send me an email every morning at 6 a.m. with the metrics from yesterday. What was the average transaction time? What was the minimum number? What was the maximum? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever that you want to do. And I get that email every month, every day for three months. You know, I'm probably going to, and, and I haven't noticed any issues, I'm probably going to stop opening that email some days. Or I'm probably not going to be looking as closely to it every day. So you might want to, instead of just sending normal information, you might want to send exceptional things. You get an email when things are outside of a certain threshold, for example. So that would be part of your what will you do with that or why you're doing this. Now let me just say, <laughs> this is not just a personal experience thing, but I see this all of the time where people are they've read some article, they've talked to somebody who said that they did this one thing for their system and it solved their problem. So they start tracking it down on their end. Solve the easy things first, right? You know, the the rule pretty much in performance tuning is the Pareto principle, the 80-20, right? So 80% of your performance issues are likely to be solved by doing 20% of the things. So find those 20%, those low-hanging fruit, as we say, and solve that. So premature optimization is <laughs> its a uh, programming term that basically means you are, you're really going above and beyond to try to optimize for things that you don't know if they're actually going to be problems. And they can be real project delay things. So let's talk about the built-in tools we're going to talk about in this chapter. There are other built-in tools, okay? But I, at some point, I kind of had to make a cutoff point and just say, okay, I can only have enough time to show all of these. All right, so a two-year-old came in there. Let's <laughs> reboot on this one here. Three, two, one. Now, premature optimization is a real-time stealer here. This will sink a project. You, what you're really trying to do when you're working with performance tuning, you want to think about the, the Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% of the optimizations are going to be achieved by doing 20% of the things. Okay. The other 80% of the time that you would spend doing optimizations is only going to get you that final 20%. So grab the low-hanging fruit, right? Do that 20% now and don't spend way too much time prematurely optimizing things. Or I would, I, I shouldn't go too far, but you don't want to also spend that time prematurely implementing things that you think you're going to need down the road. That kills me all the time. All right, let's talk about the built-in tools. We're kind of going long on this, so we've got to go. We're going to talk about profiler, tracing, and traces. And some of you might be confused. Well, I thought SQL Profiler was traces, and it made traces. Okay, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the DETA, the Database Engine Tuning Advisor, a little bit more about execution plans, a little bit more about some of the set commands, and then we're going to talk about performance monitor. So system monitor, perfmon, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to go down the list here. Uh, got a bunch of bullet points we're going to talk about. Really, I'm, I'm using this lecture as a, let's just talk about them. And then we'll come back in the next few videos and we're going to demo each one of these. Right? We're going to see profiler in action. We're going to see traces. We're going to do all of these things, right?
All right, so what is SQL Server Profiler? It's a GUI tool. It ships with SQL Server. It's installed okay, uh, right in the start menu with everything out. You can use it to create traces. You can display previously stored traces. Uh, and you can actually replay those traces against a server of your choice. Okay? This is one of those things that you'd better master. Don't go to a job interview and say that you are a SQL developer or a DBA, and that, but you don't really know much about Profiler. Now, Profiler requires some pretty serious permissions. However, in SQL 2005 and above, it's pretty easy for the DBA to give you the rights to use Profiler. Uh, now, when we trace, we can store that trace in a TRC file, or we can store those traces in tables. Okay? We're going to talk about those. Again, let's just get into the videos where we can actually do demos of it. Now, it's not the only tool that creates or displays traces. And this is where some people will get confused. It's just one tool that does it. It is, without a doubt, the easiest tool to work with, but it's not the only tool that can work with traces. Right? Now, behind the scenes, and a lot of people don't know this or aren't familiar with this. There's actually, by default, a trace running all the time. So this is enabled. It's turned on by default. So you have had to, or your DBA would have had to have turned it off uh, if it's not running in your environment. We call it the default trace. So it runs by default. And it's capturing the, the main, the big activity things like creating objects, dropping objects, uh, that kind of big, big important information. It's not capturing all your transactions that come through. Uh, that would add too much monitoring overhead to the system here. I'm going to suggest you leave it on. Uh, you'd have to be in a really, really close to 100% CPU environment before you'd, you'd find any value from disabling this. We're going to talk more about it. I'll show you how to turn it on and turn it off and how to query it and see what it is when we get into our videos. Now, I mentioned two slides ago, Profiler is not the only tool we can use, right? Profiler itself actually adds a tiny bit of overhead to the tracing process. You are probably better off running your traces outside of Profiler. So what you'll find most of us will do is if we want traces to be run at specific points, I want my trace to start at 2 p.m. and end at 4 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. You can script out the creation of the trace, and you'll schedule that as a job. That way you don't have to be sitting there running Profiler. Profiler, like I said, it adds overhead. So if we can avoid that overhead of using Profiler, we're better off doing so. Now, just a, a little performance tip for working with traces. You can easily trace so much information that you'll spend hours looking for something interesting. I was actually in this exact situation about, oh, about 10 days ago. I had a client send me a trace, and they had captured every little thing that came into the SQL Server for a two-hour period. So their trace was massive because we're talking, I think they had 9,000 something connections going on. Right? This was a clustered 64-bit server. I mean, this is a, a big, big environment we were working in here. And so we're dealing with over a million entries of things that had been traced in this time period. And it just, it takes so long to spot the trends when you're working with that. So what you want to do, you want to filter out a lot of things that you never, you know you're never going to look at. Okay? So use filters. I'll show you how to use the filters over the next couple of videos here. Uh, use filters. The more filters you use, the less overhead. Basically, the less you monitor, the less overhead. That's the idea. Filters allow us to say, you know what? I don't want to monitor this type of an event, or I don't want to monitor this thing or I want to set it up to where I'm only monitoring statements that run for more than 10 seconds. Okay. Do we want to run only the long-running queries, for example? Okay. Uh, and again, the less you track, the less overhead. That's just kind of your overriding sense of how Profiler helps or how Traces will help you. Right? Now, don't forget 
about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You heard that? <laughs> if you've gone through some of my courses, particularly in the 2000 and 2005, then you know I always talk about this. It's the idea that watching something changes its behavior. And what it really means when we apply it to performance monitoring is that there is some overhead associated with running any of these monitoring tools, not just Profiler. Profiler in particular, we're just in this section, so I'll just put it here. Uh, but you can generally add some sort of a percentage and say, by monitoring than this, we're going to add 5% more overhead to the server. I, and, and just, I pick 5% out of the top of my head. I'm, I'm not saying that that's what Profiler adds. But let's just say it adds something. Now, the more filters you put on it, the less you trace, the less you monitor, the less of an impact. You might be at a half a percentage of overhead. You might get all the way up to 5% if you just put no filters on at all. Profiler is a fairly, or a trace, let's just call it a trace. A trace is a fairly small imprint. It's not going to add that much to your system. Now, the Database Engine Tuning Advisor, let's go to the next tool here in the list because we're really going long here. This is one of those just great tools that are built in. This is particularly helpful for people who want to learn performance optimizations or who are new to doing performance tuning. What you can do is you pass in a workload. And a workload is going to be one of your traces, let's say, that you've previously used. That's usually what you're going to be working with. You're going to have traced your server, traced the activity on your server. Then you're going to pass that trace over to the database engine tuning advisor, and it's going to make suggestions to you. It's awesome, okay? It can suggest new indexes or changes to your indexes, and it'll even show you, okay, well, if you implement this index, I'm going to make your system run 30% faster. <laughs> it's not an ideal tool. Let me just say, um, using this tool blindly will get you in more trouble than if you had not used it at all for most of us. So you have to bring a minimum level of education to it to make sure you understand why it's making this suggestion and be smart enough to understand why it's actually not a good suggestion. So we'll talk about that. We'll get into it more when we get into the Database Engine Tuning Advisor in our demo video. Now the set commands we talked about fairly early on back in Chapter 3 and 4, uh, we're going to revisit uh, things like the Statistics I.O. and Statistics Time. Uh, we also talked about execution plans. We're going to revisit those and we'll show you how to do the Statistics XML and how all of that works. Just to let you know, some of... Uh, some of the folks don't know that uh, the show plan text and all have been deprecated in favor of show plan XML so, and also your statistics profile. Now the last one here is performance monitor. We're going to use this to look at both the SQL server counters as well as the environmental counters. Uh, we can look at total memory usage and then we can compare it to SQL server memory usage. Right? So we can do that both inside a SQL Server with queries and external to SQL Server with Perfmon. So we'll see how to, how to do that. But long video, let's get started. We'll talk about first traces and working with Profiler.